All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, we do a lot of talking on this show about uh, the state of Israel. And uh, there's a lot of people, believe it or not, who are relatively young and have no idea uh, what the state of Israel went through, not only to become the modern day state of Israel, but also to survive to this point. And uh, one of the first major tests of uh, a very young state of Israel was the, uh, the Six Day War. And uh, joining us now is uh, a man who has uh, written a great book on it. He's a novelist, a screenwriter, former U.S. Marine. Uh, Stephen Pressfield is with us in the book, The Lion's Gate, uh, on the front lines of the Six-Day War. And Stephen, welcome, sir. Thank you, Steve. It's great to be here. Well, talk about, I mean, this was, this was an amazing feat. And this was uh, Israel that was surrounded on every front by their enemies and uh, won an amazing, uh, an amazing battle in, in, in an amazing period of time. Now, talk about your interest in this and why you wrote the book. Well, in a, if you go on a real personal answer, Steve, it was a, a little bit of a Jewish midlife crisis for me <laughs> in that I felt like, um, first of all, I was in the Marine Corps, in the Marine Corps Reserves at the time of the Six-Day War. And I can remember when it was happening, thinking to myself, should I be here or should I be over there? And uh, then as I went on to become a historical novelist, and I, I, would, I had written books about the ancient Spartans and the ancient Athenians, the Macedonians, the British in World War II, but I'd never written anything about my own people. And the Six Day War, just as you said, Steve, was like really ranks with Thermopylae or Gettysburg in terms of just a pure military feat of just an amazing story. So I thought, you know, I, I got to, I got to write this, you know, I got to do something about this. And, it, and you just do a wonderful account of it. And, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, to, to, to just let people know uh, as, as the six day war, what it meant and what, how it realigned uh, the state of Israel. They took the Gaza Strip, they took the Golan Heights, uh, they took the Sinai, they took East Jerusalem. But interestingly enough, they took none of them from the Palestinians. They took all of those from either Syria, Egypt, or Jordan. Right. I mean, what you left left out, Steve, was the West Bank. The West Bank, is, yeah. That was what they took, too. And, of course, you know, the word Palestinian, as I understand it, don't quote me for sure of this, but I think that that was an invention of Yasser Arafat as a kind of a political way of framing an issue. But at the time, they were, the, the people who were displaced were simply Jordanian Arabs, Jordanian citizens. Yeah. In the West Bank, I mean. And so when people talk about today, you know, they took they got to give it back to the Palestinians, all the lands except for the Golan Heights that were taken, you know, from, as I said, Egypt, Syria and Jordan. Uh, I say, well, they didn't take it from the Palestinians. Why should they give it back to the Palestinians? They didn't take it from anybody. They won it in war. Uh, what was the most amazing thing about was it was I mean, was it the amazing military strategic uh, victory? Was it the speed? What, I mean, what what when you look back on this and, and through your extensive research and writings, what what impressed you the most? Well, the the military victory, yes, yeah, Steve. You know, but but to me, the most the most important thing and the most emotional thing was the heart of it was the liberation of the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. The, you know the remaining wall of Solomon's Temple, or of the uh, of the Temple Mount, of the foundation on which the old temple sat. sat. Yep. Because for 1,900 years, since 70 A.D., when the Romans burned the Second Temple to the ground, the Jews until 1948, the Jewish people had no national homeland. And even when they acquired, or when the UN um, sort of founded the state in 1948. The holiest sites of the Jewish people, including the Western Wall, were not in Israeli hands. The, the old city of Jerusalem was in Jordanian hands. And, and, and for the record, the Jordanians used to urinate on the, uh, the, the Jewish tombstones and, 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 and holy sites, and, and, and Jews had no access to Jerusalem until the end of the Six-Day War. Exactly. If you, if you wanted to make, if you were a Jew and you wanted to make a pilgrimage, you would make it to Mount Zion, which was a kind of a sort of an elevated and still is obviously an elevated place, a little bit outside of the walls of the old city. And from there, you could, you couldn't see the Western Wall. It was maybe 300 yards away. Right. You could only see a grove of poplars just above it. And uh, so in, in any event, to me, the, the, 
the, uh, when the Israeli paratroopers captured and liberated the Western Wall, that was the payoff of 1900 years of exile, diaspora, pogroms, the Holocaust, you name it, you know. And that's a, that's, a, that's a very good point, and that's your, that, that's your, Jewish, that's your Jewish pride coming through, Stephen. Uh, we're, we're just about out of time. Uh, Stephen Pressfield, uh, the book, folks, The Lion's Gate, and if you're familiar with Stephen's work or the Gates of Fire and previous works, so you know you're not going to be disappointed uh, one little bit. The Lions Gate on the front lines of the Six Day War. Stephen, good luck to you. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, thank you, Steve. My Have a good day. My pleasure. You too. More of the Steve Malsberg Show coming up.